Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota here in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. It's Wednesday, April 8th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting live on Facebook. So welcome to all of you. Let me just put up my little Facebook uh, address or whatever you want to call it <laughs> so that you know where you're at. And um, thank you for joining me, those of you that are. The beauty of live broadcasting is, of course, being able to interact with people who are live with me. So if you are out there, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear, have you say hello to me. Um, it's fun to see all these names pop up that I see um, week after week because I feel like you guys are my friends. I'm getting to know you. It's fun to hear about you too. So please share, um, share uh, where you're from, share what you're doing share how this uh, social distancing is like stressing us all out. <laughs> no. Hopefully hopefully we've gotten a kind of a routine by now and we're all getting a little more comfortable with this, but it's a, it's a strange state of affairs, isn't it? Um, crafting though, what a stress reliever. And I'm glad that those of you that are out there are crafting and enjoying this hobby just as much as I am. We're having fun, right? <laughs> Yay! Look at, oh, hi Joanne. How are you, my dear? <laughs> Good to see your name pop up. And there's Jennifer. Hello, everyone. Okay, so um, now if you are sharing um, this broadcast, if you're commenting and you're um, letting me know that you shared in a comment, that sort of thing, or you're just saying hello, you get entered into a prize drawing. I do prize drawings every time I broadcast live, and we draw one today, and then we draw two more uh, a week later when I do my next live. So you have uh, three chances to win if you are commenting in this video. You get two chances if you're commenting uh, on the Facebook broadcast and if you, you get another chance if you're broadcast or if you're commenting on the YouTube recording that I post. And I'm gonna post this one a day later, not three days later, but tomorrow. So um, those of you on YouTube watching later, you'll get even longer to comment. So. I putting away winter clothes. You know what? It was um, who said that, Carolyn? <laughs> it was warm here yesterday. There was like a heat wave that came through, but we're back down 20 degrees cooler today. Um, silly me. Yesterday I wore a sweater and I was really, really hot. And today I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt <laughs> and I might get cold, but oh well. I don't know. I'm behind the times. So um, let me give you a little spiel of what we are going to be talking about today. Um, today I'm going to share with you some fun ideas that you can do with our kits. Stampin' Up! has a lot of different kits to choose from. Um, in fact, I shared how to double the Seriously the Best kit a couple weeks back. But my favorite Stampin' Up! Month, uh, kit is called, a, it's a monthly kit and it's called Paper Pumpkin. It, uh, this product debuted back in March of 2013 and I have received and created with every single one of the kits. Every one of them. Um, what I like about these monthly kits is they come straight to my mailbox and they have everything that I need to make the intended projects within. Um, I don't have to invest a lot to get started, just a paper snips or scissors or whatever. And sometimes, like in past kits, we didn't have all the adhesives. Uh, and then they give you a block in the first kit that you ever get, you know, the first kit that, that you ever get you get a free block to use with your stamps. So you can use that block with your kits over and over again. Um, and that block is basically to mount your stamps onto so that you can stamp. Um, anyways, they're $22 a month and you get everything. You get the cardstock, the stamps, um, the ink, the embellishments, and a lot of adhesives. Um, over, over time, I have built up such a huge supply of uh, stamp, stamp sets and ink spots they're called little spots because they're miniature ink pads. Um, embellishments that are extra in all the kits. And so, and some adhesives. And I, I, it's amazing. My craft supply is immense just being a Paper Pumpkin subscriber for $22 a month. What I like to do with my kits though is go beyond and create alternate projects. I've been doing that since day one. And I've been sharing these ideas on my blog since day one as well. So if you have a past kit that you have um, sitting around that you don't know what to do with, I'm gonna show you on my, on my blog where you can find ideas that I've shared using that kit. Um, but this, this particular product actually got me started blogging. So it was 
January 2013 when they introduced this product to demonstrators and March 2013 was the first kit. I did my first blog post in, I believe, February 2013. So right in there. I was so excited about these kits. I'm like, I have to share with the world. <laughs> so um, speaking of the world though, yes, I've seen a couple comments from some of you that you're in different countries. Um, you're not in the US or in Canada and you don't have these paper pumpkin kits. But I know that Stampin' Up! wants to share their product around the world globally eventually and I don't think that this is something that they're not trying to do so I know that they brought a kit um, global in the markets that we're in uh, the Shelly kit uh, anyways so Shelly it was called and they brought that out for a while so that um, people could purchase that it wasn't a subscription but anyways I know Stampin' Up! is is trying the best they can to fr try to figure out how to get these kits uh, more global. But in the meantime, the ideas that I share today, hopefully you will gain some creative um, thoughts from them and you can apply them to products that you do have, especially if you didn't get the No Matter the Weather March 2013 kit. Um, this kit right here was very popular. In fact, I think I had over 30 people email, message me, um, text me, call me asking if I had an extra kit because it was so popular and I don't I don't get a lot of extra kits I get maybe one or two just so that I have that backup for when I create my projects so um, you got to be a subscriber <laughs> you got to chance it and the thing with them is they are surprises you don't you get hints but you don't always know what's in them so I tell you just invest in the kits take a chance and you will find alternate projects out there if you don't see ideas that you let you know if you don't like the kit as is. So let me take you to my computer. I'm going to turn it. Hang on just a second. I'm going to go ahead and show you where you can find my past ideas. Oh, let me get this off of there. Sorry about that. Um, I was just talking away. I'm so excited about Paper Pumpkin. <laughs> Anyways, if you have a past Paper Pumpkin kit, you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and you can go under the menu titled Paper Pumpkin. And in that menu, you can see, you know, learning more, signing up for the kits, um, how to order prepaid subscriptions, that sort of thing. But there's two uh, items here, recent and older Paper Pumpkin posts. If you click on the older Paper Pumpkin posts, menu item you will see a, a list of all the kits that i've ever created with which are all of them so you'll be able to go back in here and find like if you want to know what to do with the october 2018 kit you can go here and find those ideas also under here if you are an organizer and you want to organize your past paper pumpkin kit um your stamp sets you can buy these these case holders right here and then you can take and click on any one of these images um, that I have up here. Let's say you need a case for the April 2019 kit. You just click on it and it, you can download this, um, this particular case uh, little thing. So anyways, <laughs> these are from Stampin' Up! I've just collected them over the years and archived them on my blog. Okay, so let's go to... Um, I think it's right here. There we go. These are the supplies that I will be using for my project today. In fact, I'm going to share with you three projects, um, but I'm not going to walk you through all of them. I'm just going to show you two of them, and then I'm going to walk you through the Toothy Monster card. And we're going to have fun with this. Um, this card is one that I did, uh, well, I, there was a similar card to, that I did a few years back. Um, I think I got the idea from somebody else and I don't know where. It's been a long time since I've done this card. And so I decided to do it with this kit. So we're gonna make a monster card from the No Matter the Weather <laughs> kit. I know, right? How do you do a monster? You can do it. So look at the supplies here. I do wanna point out that the basic gray ink pad, I'll be using my full one, but you do get the ink spot in the kit. I'll also be using my own adhesives like the snail, um, some glue dots, mini dimensionals, but it does come with adhesives in the kit. I'll be using my own clear block, but you, of course you get one in your first kit. Um, so just keep in mind those things. I'm adding in some Whisper White cardstock 
some basic black cardstock and some garden green cardstock. Hello to those of you that are joining a little later and feel free to watch the um, replay of this because then you can catch all the things that I said at the beginning about the wonderful paper pumpkin kits. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring us to the desktop. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to find something on my computer here that I wanted to show you all. There it is. Okay, so I'll have that ready when it's time to show it to you. All right, so what are we gonna use? Well, in this kit that you get, you can make these cards, four of each of these cards with the supplies you get. And what I do is I take those supplies and I use them up, <laughs> making all kinds of alternate projects. So we're gonna take um, this card in particular, this one here, and let me zoom in a tad so you can see better. Um, this one here is, oh, sorry, let me turn it this way. So it's basically the card that you, the card base for this one that you would put those boots on. And it's got, you know, kind of a cloudy sky background that you can add clouds to. There's cloud images in the, in the stamp set, um, all kinds of fun things. In fact, in this kit, we got a bonus stamp set, which is probably one of the two reasons why everybody was like, kit, do you have any extra kits? Because you actually got two stamp sets in this kit because it's an anniversary kit. But the other reason is because the messages are so wonderful for the, for the era that we are in right now, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, no matter the weather, we're in this together, wishing you brighter days ahead. The messages are just, they're timed so um, wonderfully with what we are all dealing with. Anyway, so I took this card and I made a monster out of it. You can kind of see what's going on right now when I flipped it over, right? The reason why I thought of that is because people were flipping this one over and they were turning this into like an ocean with a gray sky, putting a boat image in there. Some people were taking this and turning this into like, a, I think it was a rain cloud or something. I, I don't know, anyways. Um, this card was flipped over and so I thought let's just flip a few other cards over so I flipped this one over and this looked like monsters monster hair to me so we're gonna make a monster out of it let's take our paper trimmer and we need to we can't have our card open up like like this like backwards right I mean you could because monsters are crazy funny anyways right so you could just make a monster a backwards monster card but we want to have a mouth on this guy so we're gonna go ahead and just slice we're going to use our paper trimmer here and I'm placing it in here so that we're cutting it in half at the center. So this card base is um, seven inches wide. We're cutting it in half at three and a half inches. And now we have this piece that we want to put on the front of another card base. So we're going to create a card base. So we're going to take our Whisper White cardstock here and we're going to place it into our trimmer at three and a half inches because that's the width that we have for this card base piece, right? So place it in here like that and we'll slice it. And I know we're going down the whole length of this 11 inch piece of cardstock. That's okay, we need it to be 10 inches because this direction here is five inches and we need to double that. So we need a 10 inch long piece and right now it's 11. So let's just go ahead and slice off an inch like this. And now we have our base that we just need to put a score line into, okay? So <laughs> I'm loving seeing your names come up, you guys. You make my day. This is just, it's so fun to share with you and to see my friends. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're gonna bring the scoring blade down and we're going to score at five inches. So now we have our note card base that is going the opposite direction, okay? So this is gonna get stuck to the front, but we are gonna do some, some creative cutting with a tool that I think all of you have at home, um, a couple tools actually, a pencil and a plate. So let's move these things out of the way because I don't think we need them anymore. And this piece here, you could add to like some other project. It's, it's a beautiful white piece of cardstock ready to use on something else. So let's bring this in and our pencil and our plates. And I'm using a small plate. This would be like um, the smallest of the three sizes that we have that are Corel, <laughs> if you have that brand. And I'm just gonna place it down here at the bottom of the monster's face area. 
So we're going to just draw a line, a pencil line. And you could certainly do the pencil line on the back side if you want to too. Um, it doesn't matter. You're going to use your eraser to get rid of it later. But we're going to shove that plate out of the way. And then we're going to just go ahead and use our scissors. Now, if your line that you create with the plate is not straight or um, if it's wonky, you know, kind of unbalanced, maybe one side goes up higher than the other, that's even better because <laughs> it's a monster. Monster cards, you seriously can make wacky and off center and, you know, it can have all kinds of issues, right? So... And it still looks good because it's a monster. So we're going to go ahead and erase these pencil lines that I drew in there. And now we're going to add to the front of our card base here. So you can see that what we're doing was we're creating a mouth. Okay. <laughs> Eva, thank you for, for joining in live. She says it's the first time joining um, live or seeing you live. Awesome. And you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. Woohoo! Yay! Are you having fun with it? You got it. You have a first, a great kit to have for your first kit. The March kit was tremendous. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stick the hairline up towards the top score area of our card and go like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and use this curve in the card base and we're going to just go ahead and cut along that curve like this. So, and if you can, you know, cut carefully, that's even better. But again, if you're not a careful cutter, it's a monster card. So seriously, if your cutting is off, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Let's grab our bone folder. I did list this in the supplies, although it's not significant that you have a bone folder, but it does help to give creases. And I'm going to trim this just a little bit more because I see a little bit of white exposed. Okay, on my sample card, my finished one, I didn't cut this way. I actually trimmed this paper, and then I had this two different shades of white here because the white in the paper pumpkin kits is slightly different. It's a slightly cooler white than the Whisper White cardstock that we carry in the online store. Just keep that in mind um, that our kits, all of our kits, even the ones that aren't paper pumpkin, um, they're just manufactured with different... Uh, white card bases so okay now this piece is going to get stuck down here so we'll just add that to the inside of our card like this and that creates the bottom or jawline of our monster so now you can see our monster taking shape here <laughs> thanks lois <laughs> all right well i'm glad that you caught me live yay and there's kathy hi kathy Okay, so we have some scraps. This was my smallest garden green scrap that I had in my drawer. Crazy, right? I must, I must use my garden green scraps pretty well. We're gonna punch two one inch circles from our garden green. And then we're gonna punch two half inch circles. You can see I've been having fun with the half inch circles in the black with our basic black. Okay, now we can set those aside. We won't need those anymore. We'll grab our snail adhesive, although the kits come with adhesive. This kit came with dimensionals. These are dimensionals. They're like foam adhesive pieces that pop things up. And it also came with these adhesive dots, which are great because you can't, I mean, this would be expensive to put a snail adhesive inside every kit, but this is a really nice, affordable way to give adhesive to all the people who get the kits. These are glue dots that we carry in the online store. A little bit more expensive to put in the kits, right? But I am gonna use these instead of these because this is quicker. It's quicker to grab the glue dot and just stick it down. Um, but I, don't, I wanted you to know that those adhesives do come in the kit. I also will be using the miniature or mini glue dots instead of the larger ones that came in the kit. But you can cut these down if you wanna make smaller um, dimensionals. So these two adhesives we're gonna pull out here along with the snail and we're just going to go ahead and add some snail adhesive to the back side of our um, basic black half inch circle. I'm gonna shift that over a little bit. My table here is dark. Let's go like this. 
There, now you can see the eyeballs a little bit better. And then we'll put adhesive on the back side of this one. And these are becoming the eyes. We have a green-eyed monster. You just wanna center those the best you can. If they're off a little bit, that's okay, because again, he's a monster. <laughs> All right, so we have our eyes, except for we wanna have the white of the eyes too. So in this kit, there are these beautiful little labels that have kind of a little faux stitching around them. Um, it almost looks as light as a pencil line kind of stitching. When I drew with pencils, when I did some other project that I'm gonna show you in a minute, the pencil color was pretty much the same as this color, so it's kind of fun. It looks like a pencil stitching. And we're gonna add our green eyes to these, but they're gonna be somewhat inward, like that. We'll do the same thing here, somewhat inward. Okay. And then we're gonna add these to the front. Now you could make them kind of kitty wampus <laughs> like this. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that on this card because the other one is not. It's straight, they're even, the eyeballs are even. They are a little crossed on my other card, but um, I made them straight across, I don't know why. So these, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of situate them like that because that's fun. I mean, look at that guy, he looks fun. Then with our glue dots um, and our dimensionals, let's go ahead and add, um, the, oh, these guys, these little hearts, this came in the kit too. These little hearts came in the kit as well. So we're gonna flip two of them over and we're gonna add a mini dimensional in the middle of each one. If I can flip it over. <laughs> All right, oh my goodness, Rachel. We're having dimensional issues. Anyways, there's a backing that I'm trying to peel off here. Oh, there we go. My fingernail wasn't working. I'm cold because I'm wearing a t-shirt today. What was I thinking? It should have been a sweater today and a t-shirt yesterday. All right, then these go on kind of, I mean, you could turn them however you want, but they're gonna become the nose of the monster kind of like the nostrils or whatever. We'll move them over just a little bit. So there's the nostrils. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Okay, and then we're gonna grab a few more of those hearts and we're going to flip them over and we're gonna find the center of our monster's mouth. So at this point, it might help to have a ruler and you can just kind of grab that pencil again and mark the middle. Half of three and a half would be one and three, four, three fourths. So there, we've marked the middle and that'll help guide us. So we're gonna put a glue dot on the lower part of the heart. So where the, t the point is, we're gonna put a glue dot on the white side like that on the lower portion, okay? So you don't want the glue dot to be really high up. You want it to be lower down. In fact, I probably should have gotten it a little lower. We'll just pray that it works. Okay, then we're gonna add this to our card like that. Yep, I need to be a little bit lower. And we need a gap in between. And I think the gap is about eighth inch, an eighth of an inch. So there, <laughs> Gosh, we could do it just with, with just one heart. I mean, look at him, he's so cute. All right, he's just got one tooth. I love it. Okay, so we'll pick up another glue dot and we'll add that kind of equal distance. And I think once I see the front, yeah, I think we're gonna move it just a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and erase this pencil line because we don't need that in there. And the rest of the hearts will get spaced evenly because watch this trick. So once you got the two in the middle, then you just take and put two on the outside. And I like them kind of sticking out a little bit on the outside, like that. So it's coming to that edge, but just slightly over, see that? And then this one, same thing. 
Isn't he cute? Yeah, you really, I mean, you could, if you only had a few hearts to use, you could finish him just like this. He does not need to have all those hearts for those teeth. So there's another one. <laughs> oh, Kendra, I love it. She goes, now I wish I wouldn't have used all my kit. I'm sorry. So I share, Kendra, you're so sweet. I share my ideas usually around the 20th, 21st, 22nd of the month. And then, um, and I share a lot of those ideas. And then uh, I share again uh, towards the end of the month because I'm in a paper pumpkin blog hop. And then I share typically like the 7th, 8th, 9th of the month, of the following month, I should say, um, so that I can kind of like give a reminder to anybody who hasn't gotten these kits yet or isn't subscribed to get subscribed. <laughs> so that's why what I'm doing with this project and the other two. So yeah, always wait. No, I'm kidding. Don't wait. Go, use up your kit. Have fun with it, right? Um, so this is the monster card on the outside. And then you can see on the inside, there's all these little hearts that are showing up like that. So we're going to grab our ink and this is the ink that you can get in the online store this is the ink that comes with the kit it's a cute little ink pad so collect those they work great um, let's grab our stamp from this set and the block by the way that you get with your first kit it's not ergonomic but it's it's sturdy so you can either use that block or you can use another one doesn't matter We'll open up our stamp pad. I love that the stamps for years now have been coming in the photopolymer totally clear. So that makes it easy. Um, totally clear stamps are much easier to use than the red rubber ones because you can see right through them. So yay for that. And that's our finished card. So here's the other one. And that's the other guy that I made. Isn't he cute? <laughs> I love him. I love making monsters. In fact, I'm going to show you right now um, the monsters that I have shared in the past. So let me set up my camera so you can see. Okay, this is the one that I made back in December, 20, uh, December 29, 2014. Oh my gosh, that is a long time ago. So that's the one that I made based on a card that I had seen on Pinterest. I, gosh, I don't even remember where the card was, I guess. I didn't link it but that was the card um i've done let's see other monsters with paper pumpkin kits so this is one that i did uh, a little fruit snack monster treat holder um these are bookmarks so if you look here you can see how they work in a book so i am a fan of monsters <laughs> i don't know they're just cutesy little guys that you can create using your supplies this was one of my favorites i used a um a, what do you call it an oatmeal container uh, Quaker Oats container and just wrapped these little wreath parts all the way around this guy and then I made a matching card anyways he was fun to make let's see what else I have here oh and so I just wanted to tell you too that you can find my other alternate ideas that I did using this kit the no matter the weather in my I think this was the 21st let's see here we'll scroll up try not to make you dizzy Close your eyes if the scrolling is making you dizzy because I don't remember the day. Um, yep, March 21st. And then I did another share on the 26th of March. Um, so, and what's this last one? Why did I? Oh, that's just the past kids. Okay, so let's go back. So now um, I'm going to show you one other thing that I want you to keep in mind right now. And I don't know if some of you know this, but it's going to help. Here, let's just crease that guy down a little bit more so he lies flat. But a lot of people are, you know, I mean, we're worried and it makes sense why we're worried. Um, we're worried to get the mail. We're worried to, you know, but the mail is still being delivered. I think they would have stopped deliveries and postage, you know, the U.S. postal system, um, if that would have been a concern that was significant enough, right? But if you are worried, a lot of people, a lot of card makers, and we're sharing this idea with everybody out there, a lot of card makers are licking their envelopes not with their tongues right now. <laughs> We're using paintbrushes, aqua painters, um, glue sticks. So, so keep that in mind. If you are a crafter, it's going to help your 
card recipients to get, you know, feel better about opening their mail if you can just, you know, seal them with, with something other than your saliva. <laughs> and also, you know, if that is a concern, put your mail and your cards off to one side, wash your hands, and open them a couple days later. Um, I know that I have several friends and family members who are a little more worried about that, and so that's what they're doing. And um, just, you know, it, it breaks down. I mean, the they say that the coronavirus breaks down, um, decomposes or whatever you want to call it, within hours of being on a surface like paper or whatever. And so, but still, if you have a concern, those are things to keep in mind. Okay, we're gonna move this off to the side. We, I wanna show you a couple more ideas. Um, so, let me grab it here. This is another idea that I'm gonna be sharing on my blog post tomorrow. This is a card that I'm gonna be sending out to five of my lucky subscribers. So I do gift my subscribers from now and, now and then, and I give out prizes and, they get some exclusive ideas. This card was done with the bunny stamp, um, the grass stamp, and using, again, this card upside down. So I made it look like a lake and a dark sky. Um, used the glittered uh, organdy black ribbon, some rhinestones in there, some silver foil paper layers. On the inside, it looks like this. And the bunny, I just wanna mention, I did the bunny a couple times on scrap paper first. This one was stamped with the Memento ink and colored in with the Stampin' Write marker. This marker here, I colored it in that way, but you can see, if you look close, you can see the streaks of the marker, right? It's very streaked. The blends markers don't streak, they're a very smooth color, but the problem is after I stamped it down with the memento ink and, and colored it in with just the memento marker, the color, because of taking longer to dry and because it's alcohol-based, it spreads a little bit, went beyond the lines. Um, so, and, and, and you know, this is, the, I was using the kit paper, so it's not like whisper white paper. So I wanted to combine those two ideas. So for this bunny, what I did is I took and first stamped it with the memento, then I colored in right along the outline area with the Stampin' Write marker, and then I colored with the blends on the inside so that the inside was very smooth. So it looks like a much smoother bunny. It's the shadow of the bunny next to a little lake. Um, so yeah, that was fun to make, very fun to make. Another project, <laughs> and I might have to zoom out for this. Um, let's, you guys are already probably laughing. Okay, so I made some pages. I make uh, 12 by 12 pages with every single kit because I am a scrapbooker and when I was doing in-person classes, I had scrapbooking clubs and I promised my scrapbookers that I would never stop scrapbooking with the kits. From day one, I have been scrapbooking with the um, paper pumpkin kits. So you will find a scrapbook idea with every single kit. This page was inspired, of course, by what's going on in the world. So I took those circles that we made the eyes out of, right? These guys here. And I made them into toilet paper rolls. <laughs> so April 2020 um, kind of did like a 3D effect by punching another white circle um, using the white paper from the kit. So it was the same white. And like, I think I probably got it from like that extra card half or an envelope or something. But I just punched another circle, placed it behind and shifted it off to the side a little bit. I punched a half inch circle with this color cardstock, stuck it in the middle. And then I punched another half inch circle with, um, and here, let me see if I can demonstrate that, with a scrap, I need a scrap. Oh, I'll just grab this scrap. Okay, so I punched another half inch circle with a scrap of brown. I actually used the early espresso. And then I came back in and without punching a full one, I punched like a half moon and got this piece and laid that over the top of the full blue, the balmy blue circle. So that's how I got that 3D looking effect. And then this I just kind of hand cut out and I put pencil stitched lines in there so it looks like it's you know, toilet paper that's got separations between each square. Okay, oh, and here, 
Okay, I left the flower on here because I wanted to show you that just for humor, I also put a little face mask on our bunny and I made that from the petal of this flower. So I just cut the petal and stuck that over the face of our bunny so that our Easter bunny is being safe as he goes from door to door um, dropping off goodies in baskets. So um, I'll add some pictures to these pages and um, share those with you soon. But um, I used a uh, Thank You Easter Bunny created from these dies. So the thanks is in our word wishes, no wait, sorry, well-written, well-written set of dies. So if you are a die cutting, embossing person, you can get these well wishes. It's hard to read them, but there's things like happy in there and miss and love and you. So I used the thanks and the you and did thank you. So I just cut off the S. It also has this little frilly flower piece here. And then um, from these, these are our word wishes dies. So they're more holiday related. I have the Easter in there. So I did that. And then the B is, <laughs> you'll have to visit my blog tomorrow because I don't remember exactly how I created all of these, but bunny okay so b is p a for patrick's saint patrick's day and i cut the top part of the a off and then i added a little loop from another letter cut another n from somewhere else and then the n y i don't know you'll have to look at my blog post <laughs> but that's what i did too to get the april as i got creative with some lettering and i will show you photos of where i got those letters the clouds are a stamp in the kit um they are there's actually a couple clouds in there. These images, uh, the boots with the flowers in them, oh, you can't see there. Those are from the kit, and so I used four of them on these pages. These are the envelope linings. Um, you can see the grass stamp in there. Yeah, it was fun, 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 fun. So, oh, and to get those little tiny pieces on, I recommend highly having this little setup. So, and that, this is a holder. I've shown that before. You can get those on Etsy or whatever. Um, just a little glue holder. But basically you take your Tombow glue and you squeeze out a portion onto your silicone pad. Or if you don't have one of those, you just squeeze it down into scrap paper. Grab a sponge, pounce into it until you get that, that sponge loaded with a little bit of adhesive on there. And then you flip over your skinny piece. We'll just use this here. And you start dabbing away, making sure that you don't move that skinny piece because otherwise if you move it, you're gonna get glue on the front side, right? So you lift it up, you stick it down on your project, and you have a really um, great all Stampin' Up! way of adding adhesive to the back of those skinny pieces. Let's bring these guys back in. <laughs> in fact, we'll bring in our, our pages, because they're funny, and our cards, and what was the other thing? Here, here's our other card. There. So. I hope that you had fun with what I shared. Um, oh, and I want to share you, okay, one more, sorry. I have this one. So this one I did with non-paper pumpkin kit stuff, showing you that yes, you can apply these ideas. So let's say you don't live in, the, in Canada or the US, you missed out on this paper pumpkin kit. You could still make a monster card pretty easily. This one was done with one of the cards that comes in our What's it called? Magnolia Lane Memories and More kit. So they have some fun little card pieces in there. These are the stickers from that kit. There's more little stickers. They're like cardstock quality stickers. So my monster says, hello, you on the front and on the inside, you are amazing. So yes, you can do monsters with other products. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this guy up here too so you can see, or her, I should say. She's got eyelashes, right? So we'll stick her in there. So now you can see them all at once. <laughs> so what are our prizes, Vanna? Um, our prizes are, for this broadcast today, I have three full kits of those Magnolia Lane Memories and More kit, um, card, cards. And I'm gonna show you which one I did out of here. So here's my open one. For that monster card I used, I've used up this card Kit so much there's hardly any left but I used this one and then I used uh, from the stickers let's see 
Do I have them? I do. I have them in here. So if you want to recreate this, it comes with sticker sheets, vellum sheets, four by three, th uh, four by six size. But I used these flowers, these leaves, and some of these little sticker sayings to make that monster. So again, yeah, you can apply these ideas to so many Stampin' Up! products. So the winner that I draw today will get the Magnolia Lane Memories and More card pack. And then we have two more winners that we'll draw next week, okay? So um, last week's winners though, or I should say winners up through today from last week's broadcast where I did the, the coloring, color pop, what did I call it? Color popping timeless tulips, remember that broadcast? And we had these prizes for that. We had extra thoughtful blooms stamp sets. So those winners are, congratulations, Marsha Kulibert and Laura Woods. So I drew Marsha's name from the Facebook comments that have been accumulating since last week. And I drew Laura's name from the YouTube comments that accumulated since Saturday. So congratulations to you two. Um, hopefully you, we will connect. It's sometimes hard for me to reach you but please reach out to me if I drew your name so that I can get your prizes to you. And then for this week, let's go to our computer. Let me make sure I've got it set up here though. So we're gonna take that off of there and make sure we're set up. Okay, we're on my page now. Here we go. So this is where you guys are at right now, okay? You are on my Facebook page stamp your art up with Rachel so I'm just going here and we're gonna do a refresh so um, when I do the refresh basically I'm going to the videos so as of this point are you guys all in did you all comment so you get in on the prize drawing <laughs> all right pick me I love it Linda thank you uh, you know it's funny because there's a lot of you who comment more than once and you should be winning eventually I promise you <laughs> So let's do a refresh by clicking on our videos and then we're going to scroll to the video that is live right now. Toothy Monster Card, we're calling it. There we go. We're going to grab the link for that and we're going to come over to our comment picker. Um, Commentpicker.com for those of you that are demonstrators and want to know how to do this. This is the free site that I use for choosing my my Facebook Live winners, okay? I know, I love it. I love it, the emoji there, Karen, that was great. <laughs> All right, we have 167 of you who are live commenting with me right now. Thank you so much for adding your comment in there. We're gonna click the Start button and we'll see who our winner is. <laughs> the winner today is Robin Gardner Juvan. Is that how you say your name? I love it. Congrats, Robin. Congrats to you. And she wrote down bunny with a mask. Love it. <laughs> Yay. It's fun to see your comments come through. Um, I am going to take a chance because sometimes this happens where I click on your name and it actually leads me right to your comment because um, then I can get a hold of you easier. I don't know if that'll work, but we're just going to take a chance on that. So in the meantime, let's go back to our project so you can see them once again. Um, Robin, you won this puppy right here. So if you want to get in on um, these types of products, again, um, Paper Pumpkin is the name of the particular product. And again, go to my website, stampyourartout.com, click on the pumpkin tab, go down and there's a sign up tab there, there's a learn more tab. I'll put those links into my blog, uh, my blog post and into my video so that if you're looking for how to get more information on that, you can. If you are a demonstrator or you have a demonstrator of your own, um, get signed up with them. It's, it's crazy fun. Um, Paper Pumpkin Fan Club, we're all on Facebook that are watching right now. Um, that's a great resource for getting ideas. And if you're a demonstrator, there is a Stampin' Up! Um, run site called Paper Pumpkin Demonstrator Connection. So yes, you can get tons of ideas out there. You can Google ideas if you're not on Facebook. Um, you can look on Pinterest for ideas. There's um, lots of alternate project ideas out there. So I tell you, take the chance, just get the kit every month. That way you don't have to worry about missing a kit. They're very affordable and you'll always find an idea somewhere out there for these kits, okay? 
All right, I'm gonna take that off the screen and I'm gonna bid you adieu. Uh, it is, what day is it today? The 8th? So tomorrow is the 9th. I'll post this on my blog tomorrow so that you can get, um, come back to stampyourart.com and you can see this video again with photos of the ideas. You cannot fail. You're right, Bonnie-Ann. <laughs> Good to see your name, by the way. Um, you cannot fail with Paper Pumpkin. Just a great, great um, product. To, uh, next week, I will be broadcasting live here again on Facebook. Um, on April 15th. So I hope you join me there. And I think that's all I needed to share. We're gonna have fun, right? We're gonna have fun always creating. Enjoy um, social distancing by, you know, by being at home and creating and sending cards. Um, make some fun little goodies, leave them on your neighbor's doorsteps. And you know, you can knock on the door and then walk six feet back and say, hey, just giving you a little Easter treat. Do some fun things this coming weekend, right? Have fun, enjoy. And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.